Hi, I want to show you everything about brushes in Rough Animator, uh, how to use them, how to import them, and how to achieve the best results. So let's get started. Importing brushes. How do you import brushes? It's quite simple. You go on this brush tip icon um, and scroll all the way down to add brush shape. What's important to know is that the brushes have to be a PNG. They have to have transparency, so not white background, instead a transparent background. Otherwise, they will only paint squares. So this is important to know. And the recommended size is actually 300 by 300 pixels. Why is it the recommended size? The maximum brush size is 300 by 300 pixels. Um, so if you import something that's larger than 300 by 300 pixels, it will be scaled down and will have artifacts in the end. So you probably don't want that. So go from the starts with 300 by 300 or smaller. So let's get down to it. Uh, again, click on the brush icon. Then you have probably here only the three standard brushes. Instead, you want to go down to add brush shape and then browse your iPad for brushes. And then just go to your folder and import the brush you want. Click on that and then it will and then it will be here. Cool. If you want to get started with some brushes, I provided a textured brush set. Um, you can download it in the description. Uh, it's a set of some of my favorite brushes. Um, you can get it for free on Gumroad. You can also leave a tip if you want. Uh, otherwise, put $0 uh, for it. And if you download it, it would be really nice if you give some feedback. Um, and if you rate it there, um, that would really help me out. And here's a small demonstration of what brushes are actually included in the download. Next thing, let's go through all the brush settings. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory, so I don't have to say too much about all of them, but they have some gotchas. Not all of them work how you would expect them to work in other drawing applications. So the first thing is the brush size up here. Uh, it's pretty, this one is really self-explanatory. The higher the brush size, the bigger the brush in the end. Um, there's not much to say here. This works like expected. Okay, so the next one, opacity. Also pretty much self-explanatory, you would think. 100% uh, looks something like this, 50% is 20%. But if we see it at action, it doesn't exactly behave like you would think. Um, let's set spacing down for now to like one. 100% um, yeah, pretty much looks like you would expect it to look. Uh, but now let's set it down to 50%. Uh, will it look like this? No, it actually also looks like 100%. And if we set down to 20%, it still pretty much looks like 100%. So what the heck is happening here? Um, so how brushes work in Rough Animator is they apply the tip over and over and the spacing actually controls the distance. So when the distance is just 1%, then it applies the whole time on top. And when it applies 20% on top of 20%, uh, it adds up very quickly. So this is why you end up with a very black stroke. So the tip here is if you want really lower opacity, uh, also increase spacing then you will get a lower looking opacity like this. Um, but you will also get more space between uh, the brushes. And for example, if you're using a round brush, it produces these weird artifacts then. Uh, so you see where it overlaps itself much more clear. Uh, so it's not very pretty. Uh, but then if you go down to very small spacing, 
then it then it's black again so you have to either use very low opacity to get um, a smooth uh, effect or very high spacing um, which then produces the artifacts so this is it about opacity next thing spacing yeah I already touched this topic on the previous one spacing basically means uh, the distance between each brush application uh, so I demonstrated it here with my circle brush so 100% whoop, set it to 100% basically means it's almost 100% apart I'm not really sure if this is percentage because uh, even with 100 I get overlaps with some brushes so it's not 100% it's close to 100% I guess um, and then 50% it looks like this so and with, with one it probably looks like a, just a normal stroke with most brushes yeah you can use this to your advantage for different effects it's like here with the um, circle brush or also to play with the opacity and the spacing to, to get the right results that you want okay let's go to smoothing smoothing um, I haven't really figured it out completely uh, it's not really helpful for me at the moment uh, here I made three circles um, with three different smoothings um, and you see zero yeah it looks like drawn by hand uh, three is a bit more smooth but it's also smaller although I didn't paint it necessarily smaller and seven I painted it the same size and this is what happened uh, but let's demonstrate it for you um, not only in the pre-made thing but let's show it uh, here this is no smoothing then I set it to three smoothing yeah it smoothens it out a bit but the higher I go the weirder the smoothing becomes um, it's always making the line smaller in the end and also look what it does for squiggly lines it's not applying like Bezier smoothing but instead it's I don't know what it does I think it just deletes some of the points in between um, yeah so it's a very weird result for me I don't like it don't use it <laughs> it's my point um, actually it's also very bad performance if you use super large brushes it's very slow so don't use it for large brushes um, yeah I could show it quickly uh, let's do this brush set it all the way to 300 uh, not much spacing and full smoothing and bam Look, it's very slow it's super leggy okay let's go on to the next setting which is the draw modes this is one of my favorite settings because you can do so much with it and it's very helpful and um, there's three different draw modes you can find them here draws in front draws behind and draws inside and here it basically explains what they do draws in front so if you're in the same layer and you have drawn something like this shape and then you use draw in front it will just draw on top of it if you have drawn an, um, like here a circle and then you draw with the draw behind mode then it just literally draws behind it it doesn't touch the pixels you have already drawn uh, and then if you use draw inside it only paints inside the pixels you have already drawn so I can again demonstrate it here draws in front oops uh, this is too big let's do it like this draws in front yeah just <laughs> just draws in front um, draw behind wait I'm on the wrong layer uh, let's go here um, here draw in front no, now I'm in draw behind. Draw behind. It draws literally behind all the pixels 
on the layer draw in front just will draw on top of it and destroy whatever you have uh, so yeah if you want to draw on top draw, use draw in front and draw inside which is one of my favorite modes is it only draws in there where what you already have so you can use it for example to just recolorize something like here you see it but it preserves all the texture and yeah everything you have drawn before so it's pretty cool and in my next tutorial i will actually talk a bit more about how to create different textured and grainy effects um, with these draw modes okay the next thing is pressure sensitivity also pretty much self-explanatory um, it controls the brush size and opacity based on your pressure of your pen <laughs> if you're using an ipad you have probably the apple pen and it has pretty good pressure sensitivity and puts that to use to um, control brush size and opacity at the same time but actually there's a pro tip um, there's no settings here how much it controls either of them but if you go into the settings and then scroll down you will see here minimum brush size pressure and minimum brush opacity pressure so if you set one completely to zero it means it will use the whole range between between zero and 100 uh, so if you just want to control the brush size you set uh, minimum brush size pressure to zero uh, and then it looks like this it goes all the way down from one pixel to whatever you set up and on the other hand if you only want to control brush opacity you set this to zero and the pressure of brush size to 100 and then you just have here the brush opacity control um, again with the gotchas that I explained to you before concerning opacity uh, so basically play around with this and found, find your favorite settings my favorite setting is I set this to like 50% and opacity uh, also somewhere around here so I don't like it when the brush size jumps too much especially when drawing smaller lines okay and the last one randomized rotation this little checkbox right here it controls if your brush tip shape is rotated in a random direction each time it is reapplied or if it stays stationary in its current rotation or like in its initial imported rotation so see the first example here is without rotation it basically reapplies the brush shape over and over and it creates this effect like uh, it's copied over and over again uh, sometimes you might want this effect sometimes you might want uh, to have something more random that's when you use randomized rotation then it basically gives you this more grainy texture here because it, each time it's reapplied it rotates the brush tip shape over and over again um, yeah so randomized rotation off randomized rotation on this is a very nice feature to achieve all kinds of different textured effects uh, I use this one a lot usually I have randomized rotation on for all my brushes um, uh, unless I really am going for something very specific okay this is it about all the settings right here uh, my very last tip actually if you created a brush that you really really like and you want to come back to it and use it um, then you want to save the brush uh, to save the brush you have to click on here and save as new brush preset that way you can jump around between your brushes especially the ones you use a lot um, you can jump around and come back to them over and over again like you're doing line art then 
you're doing some some coloring or some effect on top of it then you want to go back to line art and instead of uh, fiddling around with this all the time you can save the brush preset and, and have it there and this can save you a lot of time in the end and again if you want to get started with some brushes i have uh, my brush bag provided in the link in the description below uh, to get you started with some brushes for example i have a lots of grainy brushes there um, like this one here and it's helpful to create uh, lots of um, a bunch of different effects um, i hope uh, they help you out to get started with brushes otherwise it's very simple to create your own brushes um, it's no big deal uh, if you still have some questions also just don't hesitate to ask uh, my next tutorial will be more on creating textured effects uh, in rough animator um, with brushes and it's gonna be a short tutorial how I achieve different kinds of effects in my animations um, with different kind of brushes uh, yeah I hope you like the tutorial and I'll see you on the next one uh, have a nice day and create something cool tag me on my Instagram which is bad cat animations um, maybe I will write it down here somewhere or tag me on Twitter at just and yeah hope you like that create something nice <laughs>